Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Wrap, brought to you by Michigan Medicine Headlines. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. And I'm Dan's most experienced co-host, Hunter Mitchell. Today, we're going to learn about work Michigan Medicine is doing to help some of our younger patients through the Adolescent Health Initiative and its Teen Advisory Council. Now, before we get into how we help younger patients, be sure you go back and get caught up on any older episodes of The Wrap you may have missed. You can find the shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. Episodes can also be found on the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel and as part of the headlines we can review. On that note, let's bring in today's guest. Can all of you please introduce yourselves and where you go to school? Sure. My name is Jaren Gajegi. I am a third year student at Wayne State University, majoring in public health on the pre-med track, and I have been part of Tech Tech since 2019. My name is Chris. I'm a um, now senior at the University of Michigan, studying biopsychology, cognition, and neuroscience. And I am applying to dental school. Um, so that's my postgrad plan. Um, I've been with Tag Tech, I believe I just finished up my fifth year now. So I'll be entering in my sixth and final year. Hello, my name is Sarah Gabala, and I'm a rising junior at the University of Michigan, and I'm also majoring in public health on a pre-medicine track. And um, I have been with Tech Tech since last year, so I'm a very new member. Outstanding. So you all have mentioned Tech Tech. Uh, can one of you go into detail about what Tech Tech is and who is part of it? Yeah, I can take that one. So. Um, Tag Tag stands for the Adolescent Champion Teen Advisory Council. Um, we're essentially a advisory council to the Adolescent Health Initiative. Um, we're youth generally in the Washtenaw County area, um, but we're pretty much all around Metro Detroit. And what we really serve as is a body um, that informs the work that, ta- that um, the Adolescent Health Initiative does. So anything that is going to get sent out to AHI's clients, um, whether that's a poster to hang up in a clinic that youth are gonna be served at, um, or maybe a new training module or anything of that sort. It gets run through TAGTAC first to make sure that it's youth approved. Um, our motto pretty much is nothing about us without us. So all the work that AHI does is to serve youth and it only makes sense that youth are a part of that creative process along the way. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So what are some projects that Tech Tech has worked on in the past? Yeah, so um, our mission is to empower youth in healthcare settings by integrating diverse youth voices and values into programs, projects, and resources. So throughout the year, um, we work on projects ranging from posters to videos to tools that health centers can utilize to make their practice more adolescent centered. And these resources can actually be found on the Adolescent Health Initiative website. Um, And so on there, you'll see some of the projects that we've done. One of them is our youth-led assessment. And this is a tool for adolescents to rate a clinic based on its inclusivity. So it's pretty much just a checklist um, that a young person can go into a clinic and check off and then give it as feedback to the staff at that clinic. So some examples of things on that are does the clinic have services that are free or low cost for youth? Um, do they provide pregnancy testing and comprehensive options counseling? Do they have an all gender bathroom in a convenient location? So it's really um, meeting young people where they're at. We also informed a virtual health poster designed um, last year. And so this depicted telehealth and we had it at our annual um, adolescent health conference Um, hanging up. And it was really cool because we got to kind of choose what it looked like. So for example, we had like a young um, adolescent person sitting on their bed um, with their provider, like over Zoom. And then you saw the plants in their rooms and the posters. So it was really cool and different. We've presented at webinars and at our own um, annual conference, and probably Chris can speak more to this, um, but one example is I worked with providers to present on marijuana usage for providers, um, just to educate them on how adolescents treat and think about marijuana. Um, I've presented on youth adult partnerships and um, sexual health topics, all of those sorts of things. And then 
Um, lastly, we do, or I guess the last example is that we do um, a lot of video, video vignettes. So this is where we answer questions in one to two minutes. Um, it's just a video and then that gets put on a module for providers to see. So we've done one for like sexual health and behavioral health providers, things that we're kind of looking for with providers um, and answering questions like that. So you talked a lot about some of the projects that you've done in the past. Is there anything currently that the three of you or the rest of the council are working on that you're really excited about? Yeah, so at the moment, Tech Tech is working on a big project, which was determined through, um, which is technically a youth led process. And um, at the moment we decided to work on um, topics that, that centralize on sexual health and identity. And we'll be part, we actually partnered up with Peer Health Exchange, which is a national uh, organization that um, provides youth with knowledge and skills and resources to make healthy decisions. For, their, for themselves and their peers. Um, and these resources can be found on their website called Selfsee. And Tech Tech will be making videos to speak on their personal experiences, um, as well as resources that they have found to help them as well as the people around them. And um, something else that Tech Tech is also working on on the side is we're also working on, on, we're working on this interactive activity that is focusing on sexual health and mental health to present to adolescents that are aged 12 to 15 or 16, um, which will be presented at the Michigan MedSense Summit. Yeah, so why are adolescent-centered environments important for adolescent healthcare? I can start off with this one. Um, the environment really sets the scene for adolescent patients once they enter that clinic. And um, it really communicates how inviting um, the staff may be and overall what to expect. Because when a space is more inviting, inclusive and up-to-date, it gives the impression that the staff will be inviting as well. Um, and it kind of like sets a good first impression once the adolescent walks through the door. And I think that the largest benefit from that is that young people feel more safe in the presence of their providers. And so this um, increases overall trust, which encourages follow-up and um, is in the long run better for health outcomes because young people will continue to come back to the clinic and um, feel like they can be transparent with their provider. And so a lot of times we get asked, what does an inviting clinic look like? Um, and that's really where the youth-led assessment is a good resource. Um, but some examples are like gender neutral bathrooms, um, offering free condoms to everyone, free Wi-Fi, a staff that respects pronouns and practices in a trauma-informed manner. Um, if confidentiality is clarified, like will my parents know if I'm here getting the service today? Um, when the staff reflects the identity of the community or the adolescent and if they offer weekend and evening hours. So it really just shows that they're staying up to date for young people and offering relevant services, um, which communicates dedication to adolescent patients. Yeah, I, I think it's clear how important the environment is in setting that example. But I think, you know, one thing a lot of people might not think about is, okay, you know, this teen advisory council has 15 year olds, right? It's 15 to 22 year olds. Some might say, what does a 15 year old know about healthcare? Why are we involving them in the work, right? That the adolescent health initiative is doing here at Michigan Medicine. Can some of you maybe touch on why it is so important to engage adolescents themselves in this work? Yeah, I can definitely hit on that one. Um, I think, yeah, that does come up somewhat often with, you know, what, what does a 15 year old know that I as a doctor don't know yeah. about healthcare, you know, um, but really centering this, um, you know, work on youth experiences. And as a young person, like my lived experiences shape the healthcare that I now receive and which services I feel more comfortable accessing. Um, so by having youth of, you know, all ages from that 15 to 24 um, gap, we're able to see a lot of different things. So, um, you know, when I started out with the council, I was still in high school and I had a different provider 
really different experiences with healthcare. But as I've gone through this process where I'm able to inform the work that AHI is doing, um, I've kind of been empowered to take charge of my own healthcare as well. And um, we kind of see that with a lot of youth that get involved in this type of work. It's that, you know, they empower themselves to become an advocate for themselves and others their age, but then also they work to help um, providers understand that importance of, you know, calling in youth to youth healthcare topic uh, discussions. Yeah, and to kind of go off of that, um, representation matters a lot. And I think that we've been seeing that now more than ever. Um, and so like before I joined Tech Tech, I felt like my providers didn't really listen to me. Um, and I was just kind of, I was, they wouldn't really see me as like a person. It was like somebody that they had to get through in this 15 minute appointment. And I kind of treated that as the norm. And a lot of my friends had similar experiences. So um, just joining Tech Tech and working with the Adolescent Health Initiative, I've come to see like, that's not how it should be working. Um, and that there are providers out there that are really open for that input and want to learn. And because healthcare, just like any other industry, things are always changing. And so um, just because you know you got your medical doctor degree like 30 years ago, that doesn't mean that you understand um, everything that young people are going through now. And so that perspective is very important because um, I think that young people are often underestimated even when they're being seen by a physician. So it's important to kind of work against that mentality and um, be open to receiving feedback from young people and having that inform your decisions. Yeah, I think it's a great perspective. Sarah, do you have something to add? Oh, yes, I just wanted to uh, quickly add on that it is important to continue to include adolescents in um, topics like these because it helps also build confidence because youth and adolescent women are not just going to stay youth forever. We're going to continue to grow. And soon enough, we're going to be the people who are making these decisions in healthcare settings and in every other uh, field as well. So it is very important to start now because if you start now, as you continue to move on and move on, you're going to have more experiences and just so much more to add in the future. I think that's great. Now, before I let the three of you go, can can all of you sort of explain real quick why you got involved in Tac Tac in the first place? I think it's it's incredible work that you're doing, and I'm just sort of interested. I know Jaron and, and Chris, you've mentioned you've done this for a long time now, and Sarah, you've only done it for about a year. So maybe let's start with you, Sarah, who's only been in it for a year. What got you involved in the first place? So what got me involved in the first place is um, when I read the mission of TAC TAC, getting adolescents involved in their own health care and taking charge of their own health care, just it kind of it was kind of mind blowing for me at that moment because I always saw doctor appointments and health care is something that my mom had to deal with. It's, it's not my problem. She just makes the appointment. I get there. I talk to the doctor and I leave. So I never thought it was something that I could do that I should start doing. And, and I, as I was now in college and I had to start thinking about taking charge of my own life, starting to think about taxes and situations like that, I thought, wow, I thought it was important that I start to involve myself in these conversations and also help adolescents who are younger than me to realize that you, it's it's your life. You start now. You don't wait until you're 18 or way older because it is your life. And it is very important to let, um, to help youth even understand at the youngest age that it is okay to take control even when you're that small. Your voice does matter and it is very important. Um, so for me, it was a really funny story, but um, I was in high school, I'm from the Metro Detroit area, and I um, saw that the previous members of Tag Tag had done like a takeover of like U of M's Snapchat story for the conference that was going on that year. And I saw this, I was like, this is so cool. You know, there's young people who are my age 
that are working with healthcare, healthcare providers from all across the country. And they are telling them, you know, these are my lived experiences. These are things that I've gone through. And this is why I'm doing this work. Like I noticed some things that were wrong in my healthcare experiences and I want to work to change those. So it's, you know, working to solve those upstream issues by, um, how do I put this? Essentially, you're kind of working to create the resources that teach so many healthcare providers, as opposed to working one on one with individual providers, you're really able to just target so many. Um, and as a young person, that's really empowering. So being able to be a part of Tag Tech, I just saw the opportunity and I knew um, it was something for me. After my first year on the council, um, I was at the convention that we have every year. And I remember thinking, hmm, I am 16 years old right now. And I just got to facilitate a session where I was teaching people like, you know, the director of healthcare for the entire state of Indiana, what it means to be a young person receiving healthcare today and what youth centered care is really about. And that was just a very empowering feeling. Um, and it's why I've loved spending so much time with Tag Tag these past few years. Um, I'm sad it'll be coming to an end in another year, but um, I'm super pleased with the way that um, the Tag Tag is you know, shaping up to be and all of our new members. For me, um, I definitely see a lot of my reasons and what Sarah and Chris said, but I joined when I was 17 years old and um, that's when I kind of started managing my own healthcare, like Sarah was saying. And um, I remember I had a very specific interaction with this dentist that kind of came into the room um, and did just looked at my teeth and then started talking to the hygienist and talking about like a cavity that I had and didn't really say a word to me um, and then just left. And I was like, okay, this is like the interaction that I'm getting out of this provider because it feels like there was no interaction. I kind of felt like an object and that um, I wasn't really being seen. So um, it's funny because actually I knew Chris prior to joining Tech Tech and he had posted um, like on an Instagram story that they were accepting applications. And so that's when I was really still like fired up about the situation. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do something about it. I'm really interested in healthcare. I think it'd be interesting to see it from this perspective because um, like I work as a medical assistant and I worked as a pharmacy technician, but this is a really different side. Um, and so, yeah, I joined and it's been a great experience. Uh, it's opened up a lot of other doors and working with providers and networking opportunities. And I'm definitely learning a lot myself, which is really cool because I feel like I've been able to teach as well. It's like a good mutual um, give and return type organization. Well, thank you so much to all of you for joining us today and for the work you're doing with Tech Tech. If you want to learn more about the Adolescent Champion Teen Advisory Council, go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. While you're there, you could check out other featured stories from this week, including a celebration of Nurses Week and Hospital Week. Find those stories and much more at mmheadlines.org. All right, Dan. Now, we didn't have an episode of The Rep last week, but there were two fun headline stories that I wanted to bring up. And First was a look at Star Wars Day, and the other was a photo gallery from National Superhero Day. So I want to know, are you in Star Wars? And if you could have one superpower, what would it be? So uh, to answer your first, the answer is most definitely not. I'm probably uh, the exception to the rule on that one. I've never seen a Star Wars uh, movie. Um, and, you know, back in the day, I remember like when I went to college, back in my day, um, you know, all my friends thought it was the weirdest thing that I had not seen a single Star Wars movie. And they had sort of made it their mission to show me and to get me into Star Wars. It never ended up happening. I think they may have basically tied me down and, and had me watch the first one, but I didn't enjoy it anyway. And I'm like, this is terrible. So I didn't watch it. So I don't begrudge those who are into it. Um, I think it's really cool that that people have this that they sort of immerse themselves in this whole other world. I just can't really get into it. Um, in terms of superpowers and which ones I would wanna have, there's a lot I would wanna have. I'd love to be able to fly. I think that'd be awesome. Um, but I think time travel would be the, the biggest superpower that I would want. And it's not even to like go live in another time. I just wanna mm -hmm. go observe, right? Like I just wanna go see what life was like in the 1700s and like, yeah. you yeah. know, things like, that. I don't actually wanna live without 
you know, modern plumbing and things like that, <laughs> but I just want to observe it. So what about you? Are you into Star Wars and what superpower would you have? Yeah, well, um, I kind of, I, I'll go over the superpower first. I agree yeah. with you. I, and I think, honestly, I've been getting on a YouTube kick where like watching interviews with people that lived in the early 1900s when video just started happening. Nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah so definitely with this, the time travel thing. I will say Star Wars is amazing. I love Star Wars. I like the first six, probably that's my favorite. And I've been getting into, have you ever heard of Lego Star Wars? I have, yeah. Aren't they like thousands of pieces too? Yes. Well, the video game, that's what I'm Oh, the video game. I have not heard of that. No. Yes. So they just released this video game. It's an essential part of my childhood that they combined (laughs) into two things. It's amazing. So yeah, I love Star Wars. I love everything to do with Star Wars. Uh, Definitely one of my favorite series. That's awesome. All right. Well, it's time for the Rap Trivia Contest. Last episode, we asked listeners, the new video aimed at keeping employees safe was created as part of which program? The answer is the Workplace Violence Prevention Program. Congratulations to Eric Olson, who sent in the correct answer. Now for this week's question, here's Hunter. Thanks, Dan. This week's question is, which areas of rest and relaxation recently celebrated their first anniversary at Michigan Medicine? Once again, which areas of rest and relaxation recently celebrated their first anniversary at Michigan Medicine? You can find the answer in this week's headline story. And once you know it, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for a chance to win a prize. That's all the time we have for this week. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us today. And thanks, as always, to our listeners and viewers for everything you do for patients, families, and each other. We'll see you next week.